Good morning, Bell Prayers and Ministry. Our scripture of emphasis this morning is, Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things will be added unto you. But well, what does that really mean? So our title this morning is, It's Time to Make Jesus the Center of It All. And if you have never made Jesus the center, it's time to give it a try. What is the center of your life and focus? Ever so often we hear the, the passage of scripture, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all is righteousness and all these things or everything in our lives will be added on to us. What does that mean for me? What does that mean for you? Oftentimes when we speak about the, all these things, we, we're thinking about health, job, money and wealth. But how do we put God first when nothing is going right in our lives? Why should God be first place in our lives? God should be first place in our lives because he's God. That's simple. He's sovereign. Oftentimes we overcomplicate things and we have a wrong theology of what the scripture actually really means. Every time you look at a passage of scripture, as I said yesterday, you need to see God's understanding and invite the Holy Spirit because Jesus tells us it's the Holy Spirit that guides us into all truth. So David was my first example of how to really seek God and to put him first. David wasn't perfect like any of us. And like David, I'm reminded that every time I go astray, every time I mess up, I can come back and confess with a true and clean heart and, and willing heart and ask God to wash me and to create in me a new heart and to renew a right spirit, spirit within me. How did David seek God? Now, when seeking God like David, it makes you uncomfortable and those around you uncomfortable. But I like to seek God. My earliest memory of seeking God was just like that. If we seek God in every choice and de decisions we make, we are indeed putting God first and seeking God's permission to take charge of our lives. The more we study the word of God, the more we pray and seek him in our decision making, we can be guaranteed that we are becoming more and more like him and our will is more aligned to him. We're less unlikely to be led by some other influence in our life because Jesus is the influencing factor. Jesus being the center, it's not just mean that Jesus is in the center here. Jesus is the center of my life. That means he's the main person. When you talk about center, we're talking about a vital factor. We're talking about is the, the key influencer in our lives. When I wake up in the morning, if Jesus is the center of my life, my first thing is, the first thing in my life is not to pick up my phone to go dial and call somebody else or to check all my messages. Yes, I'm going to check the time because um, that's where my time is on my phone right now. So the first influencing factor is I'm going to pray before I get out of my bed, even before I touch my phone. Jesus is, I'm awake this morning, not because my alarm clock went off, because if you put an alarm clock beside a dead person, that person will never move. But when Jesus becomes the center of your life, your first reaction is to go to Jesus. You know, when you just meet and um, people just meet each other and they're in a relationship, they want to talk to this person all the time. They want to, um, for everything they want to run by this person. When Jesus is the center of your life and you're in love with Jesus, that's exactly what you do. Your first inclination is not to go phone a friend or to ask somebody his opinion. Your first inclination is to take it to Papa Jesus. When Jesus becomes the center of your life, even when work doesn't work, when it hurts like hell, but even when you are sick and the doctor's given up on you, even when death is your next option, Jesus still remains the center of your life. Have you ever wondered why the evil boys could say wholeheartedly, oh king, oh king, we will not be careful in this respect because when the things in life conflict with what God says, we're not worried about our joblessness. We're not worried if we die. We're not worried if we lose everything because we've got Jesus. But to get to that limit, Jesus must become the center of your choices right now. It's not the easiest thing to do to say, okay, my first reaction is I'm going to go to Jesus. I'm going to make a stand for Jesus. You can only make a stand for Jesus when Jesus is the center of all you do. When you look at the life of David, as I started with David, David was um, running away for his life from Saul. Even when David had Saul in his hand to hurt him, he never hurt him because he recognized that vengeance belonged to the Lord. David recognized that God was the one who set up Saul. So if he touched Saul, then he would be responsible to God. And it's God's job to pull Saul down. So even when he had the opportunity to kill him, he never did. He said, it is God's chosen king that God deals with him. When David ran for his life again, 
And he said, God, if I go up to these people, will they deliver me to Saul? God says, yes, David. And when we trust God and seek him first, it does not mean that we are blindly trusting God. As we can see in this example, David asks and inquires of God that the choice is ours. Here is information, but some of us are too stubborn. We're too set in our own words. We're so happy with where we are that we don't allow the Holy Spirit to bring change into our lives. We don't change or, or we don't consider the other person. We don't change because, oh, this is what I always do. This is who I always am. But if you're always like this, where is the influence and transforming power of the spirit in our lives? Because when we seek God first, we must be willing to listen, to hear him, so we can know what path to take. So David could now make a, a clear decision because he seeked God and put him first. David trusted God's opinion. I trusted my mother's opinion because she's never wrong. My mother has what some people call in Jamaica, they call a goat mom. If my mom says something, be sure it will happen. To, to distrust my mother's opinion was to be folly and foolish. Like David, and like trusting my mother's opinion, we recognize that God always has it right, even when it doesn't look right from our opinion. Seeking God first and putting him first means that I surrender everything in my life. The next example I want to quickly look at is Jesus. Jesus was fully human and fully God. If Jesus, who had no sin, Seek God first. Every morning before the day lights out, Jesus was up into the hills praying and seeking God. Jesus surrendered. Jesus went about his job, not wimping and, and oh, did I pray on every single thing? Because he, he consecrated his life first thing in the morning and he seeked God first in the morning. We rush into our day's chores and we expect God to be there for us. I have a meeting this morning and I had to give it to God this morning. Because I know that when the sin rises up in us, because the enemy is waiting for every situation to make us look bad and to make God look bad. So I'm constantly seeking God to be my mouthpiece. I'm constantly seeking to say, God of vengeance, fight this battle for me. When I'm connected to God and I'm seeking first, when the enemy rises upon me, my first response is not to speak. My first response is to find my computer, stick my headphone in my ear and start to worship. And the songs, yes, the songs I sing is, God, you promised that you will fight for me. You promised to be a tower of strength for me. Nothing is impossible with you. All power belongs to you. Jireh, you are enough. When others have failed you and when the doctor's given you up, I can sing freely, Jireh, you are enough. When my work colleagues and everybody get on top of my nerves, I can say, be still. In the presence of the Lord, I can say, be still. Because God promised that in Exodus 14, verse 14, that if I am still, it is he who fights for me. Oftentimes we fight for ourselves because we are not seeking God and we're not putting him first. I'm out of time. I'm going to respect time this morning. We'll try to respect time more. But when the spirit take over, I'm going to let it go. If you haven't put God first and you haven't been seeking him wholeheartedly, the time is now. Heavenly Father, we just want to acknowledge God that we haven't put you first. We have put money making, we have put jobs, we have put so many things first than seeking you, Lord. Lord, our lives are so bored. Instead of seeking you wholeheartedly, we spend more time working, more time trying to perfect things in our lives when you are a perfecter of our faith and in our lives. God, if we are too bored, we, use, we need to use the time to bring others into alliance with you. Teach us how to seek you, God. Holy Spirit, this morning we give you full permission in our lives to take control. We ask you to take control of the road this morning, take control of our finances, take control of every choice we make this morning. Father, teach us how to seek you first with all, with our whole heart, and not to lean to our own understanding. Lord, even when the, the way seems broken and uphill and we seem that we're sinking, God, help us to still choose to put you first because anywhere with Jesus we can safely go. Because as a Shunammite woman, Lord, when well, she didn't seek a child, she was confident and content in her situation. And she said to the prophet, when her husband asked her if it was well, she said, it is well. She went to the prophet and said, I don't want your servant. I want you. Lord, we don't want anything else. We don't want our jobs. We don't want our finances. We don't want security without you because all of this is fruitless without you. This morning, God, we're saying we want you in our lives. This morning, we're saying, God, we want to start putting you first. If we have never put you first, God, teach us how to make you first in every choice. Remind us, God, when we're making choices that we did not consult you, Lord. 
Father, we wrestle not against flesh, but there's so many things going around. There, 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 there are demons parading as human in our worlds. And we don't even know because we are lacking discernment. The demons parading in the people that we care about, taking over the lives of our children and our people, our churches, because we lack discernment, Lord. So, Father, fill us with your spirit this morning. Father, I pray, God, you promise in your word that we don't have to worry about anything because you are in charge of us and you are fences in and out. So we're surrounding or making ourselves naked before you, Lord. So, Lord, when the Amalekites have come before us and when the Abimelechs come before us, Lord, we don't have to worry about the Abimelechs and the Amalekites and the Moabites in our lives. Because it's you, oh God. We don't have to worry about the king of Assyria in our lives, Lord. We don't have to worry about those because the God of the Lord of hosts army, it is you who fight for us and we will hold our peace this morning, Lord. So we thank you and we worship you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a blessed day, everyone. Bless, bless.